What it do, YouTube? It's your boy Tony Bo, the boy Zombie Slayer. I was just sitting here, eating my buttered noodles, browsing the YouTubes. I found a video title I had to react to. How do you think I do these reactions? The Bizarre Secret of the Rocks That Come to Life by our old Deep favorite, the California desert. Dark Footage. Known as Death Valley. Which is dark Matter, I believe. Unlike ghost towns, dinosaurs, and other fossils one can find in the desert, in Death Valley, rocks seem to have come alive. For over a century, scientists had been puzzled by the famous sailing stones of racetrack playa, rocks that move on their own and leave beautifully smooth tracks behind. Some are oh yeah, I've heard of these. Pounds and still travel more than 15 feet in a minute. Others leave trail Before they get into the science, if you have a theory, drop it below in the comments. Trails that are thousands of feet long. However, while it has been confirmed that the rocks do move without human or animal intervention, no one had ever seen them in action, until a pair of curious scientists finally got to the bottom of the mystery only a few years ago. Open case. Death Valley is the hottest place on the planet. Named it it must be. Something. The national park is notably the driest and lowest elevation in North America. Damn. By any standard, the area on the border of California and Nevada is also a strange place, home to an eerie and almost haunted site, the infamous racetrack playa. The playa, or dried lake bed, is better known for its bizarre phenomena in which hundreds of huge rocks have been found to move entirely by themselves. Well, no damn. sailing stones, the inanimate objects drift across the flat desert landscape, showing no signs of being either pushed or pulled, but nonetheless leaving tracks of their smooth gliding across the dry ground, as if propelled by no power other than their own. And yet, With heat, man, he do weird things. appear to be moving at all. Ever since Joseph Crook first documented the baffling case in his account of the sliding rock phenomenon back in 1915, scientists had been perplexed by the anomaly. It soon became evident that the rocks were not moved by human or animal intervention, but it was undeniable that they traveled across the cracked terrain. They traveled the across the cracked the terrain, man. Interest from geologists that mapped the area's bedrock. In their report, Jim McAllister and Alan Agnew suggested that the tracks could be scrapers propelled by strong gusts of wind, similar to those that cause dust devils. Okay. Then. What exactly is a dust devil? Isn't that a vacuum cleaner? In 1952, National Park Service Ranger Lewis J. Kirk thoroughly recorded observations of the furrow's length, width, and course. Soon after, scientists and the general public began speculating about the cause. Patience. Throughout the decades, several explanations have been put forward, ranging from the complex to the supernatural. It was long thought that strong winds pushed the stones, and more elaborate theories involved magnetic fields. Some even blamed alien intervention. Well, shit, However, obviously. The most plausible hypotheses were soon ruled out. While most geologists reasoned that strong winds and wet mud were at least partially responsible for the phenomenon, George M. Stanley was not convinced. In 1955, he published a paper explaining that some rocks weighed as much as a human, which made them too heavy for the area's winds to move them. In fact, some weighed up to 700 pounds. What the hell? The stones did not seem to move due to any gravitational cause. Man, drop me a subscribe. We haven't gotten to an explanation yet, but what you think moves 700 pound stones? Varying from a few ounces to hundreds of pounds, they are basically composed of dolomite and cyanite, materials not at all uncommon in the surrounding mountains. Naturally, they tumble down due to the well-known force of erosion and fall onto the flat ground in the valley below. But once they come to rest at the level surface of the dry lake, the extraordinary happens. Somehow, the rocks move horizontally, and they not only leave tracks behind, but their trails are perfectly smooth records of their paths. Even the largest rocks have left trails as long as 1,500 feet. Remarkably, rocks with a rough bottom surface tend to leave straight tracks, while those with a smoother bottom surface usually wander. 
Even though the rocks changed their location periodically, no one had ever seen them move in person. That is, until a pair of curious and impossibly patient scientists got them on film. The most boring experiment ever. The mystery of the Sailing Stones was finally cracked by two cousins in 2014. Aided by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography and NASA, among others, Richard and James Norris founded the Slithering Stones Research Initiative in 2011 and established a weather station near Racetrack Playa. To conduct the experiment, the team added 15 of their own stones with embedded GPS tracking units to monitor their movement. And then they waited. Damn! The stones are immensely difficult to catch in action because they only move under unique conditions. As the National Park's personnel ratified, the phenomenon usually happens in the winter, just after the rain comes. Okay. However, the rocks can stay put for even a decade if the perfect conditions for their sailing adventures are not met. The researchers did not initially expect to see motion in person, so they settled for remotely monitoring the area with equipment capable of measuring gusts in one-second intervals. Not long after, Ralph Lorenz of the Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins University dubbed the whole venture, quote, the most boring experiment ever. Sounds but like against it. against all odds, the wait wasn't long. In December of 2013, the cousins arrived in Death Valley and found the normally barren area covered with a pond of water no deeper than three inches, and unsuspectingly stumbled upon the perfect balance of factors causing the rare phenomenon. Heck yeah. As fate would have it, they were the first humans to capture it on camera. Spoiler alert. From December 4th. All right, so last moment to drop your guesses below, I guess. What do you think makes rocks come to life? Pause it, drop it below. Did you do it? Let's go back. 4th through 20th, the setup captured the rocks sliding across the playa using time-lapse photography. The rocks moved as fast as 15 feet per minute, and the cousins finally settled the case. The combination of winter conditions started with a shallow layer of water in the lake bed, accumulated from the rains. Later, at nighttime, the cold temperatures formed a thin layer of ice. Even so, it took a precise third requirement for the rocks to change positions. It was only during a subsequent sunny day that the melting would break the ice into large floating panels that were in turn driven by light winds. As such, the rocks were nudged into motion by the ice flows and dragged across the desert floor. Their finding proved previous hypotheses wrong, as the cousins stated in a paper in the peer-reviewed journal Plus One, quote, In contrast with previous hypotheses of powerful winds or thick ice floating rocks off the playa surface, the process of rock movement that we have observed occurs when the windowpane ice sheet covering the playa pool begins to melt in late morning sun and breaks up okay. with light winds of about 10 miles per hour. Okay. Therefore, the tens of yard wide floating panels push multiple rocks at low speeds and along trajectories determined by both the That's crazy, man. Ice and wind, that's all just moving 700 pound boulders and the across the wind. But Death also Valley. The water flowing under the ice caps. If the playa doesn't get enough rain during a certain season, the stones can't move and have to wait until the following year. Thus, racetrack playa stones move once every two or three years, but their tracks remain visible for roughly four. Since Death Valley is as arid as it gets, the opportunities to see the stones in action are scarce. However, it is possible to visit the site and hope to catch a glimpse of the event if all the conditions align. Otherwise, one can also delight in the wild sight of the mesmerizing trails left behind by the sliding stones. The sliding stones, man. If you enjoyed it, that was dark footage. And check out the rest of our. And they are part of the dark documentaries group. I am your boy Tony Bo, the E Boy Zombie Slayer. This is my B channel. You should check out my A channel as well. Play a lot of games there. Till next time. Pop.